Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and we've made it to episode 82 somehow. Can I talk to the girlies already? I have something to say. Tell the girlies. This time it is actually orange. We were supposed to be orange last time, whatever. The background is orange this time. And what does that mean? It's, it's Halloween. Well, yes, it does mean it's Halloween, but it also means that maybe our foundation looks a little orange or something else on us looks a little orange. I promise you it's just the lighting, us trying to like adjust it because last Halloween people were like, Jesse, you might want to like blend down your neck. I'm like, oh no, you didn't. Speaking of, I also just changed my lighting and I feel like I'm nervous that it's not gonna look good. Yeah, we may look a little Jersey Shore-esque and everyone just needs to be nice about it. I don't know, I'm more nervous that it's like, cause I, I changed the hue of everything, but if we're orange, then like we change as well. We'll see, hopefully we look okay. But if we don't, it's not our fault. Yeah, it's really not. So let's just get into it because today's episode is two main topics, both of which I'm in charge of <laughs> telling Lily about. Godspeed. Hopefully we'll be able to keep these ones. <laughs> The last TikTok drama that I brought to Lily, which was our last episode, we, if you watched it, you saw that we had to refilm because we couldn't cover that because, oopsie, I, I mean, I didn't. It wasn't your fault. Whatever. It was, it was, we thought it was so good. And then it was the next day. Our texts are so funny. It's literally, she sends me a screenshot of something. It's, fuck, if this is true. And I was like, fuck, fuck, no, no, no. We slowly, like we were in denial. We're like, well, maybe this. And then we're like, no. And then I spent the next three hours deep diving and I was like, no, we can't do it. We have to scrap it, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully both of these topics make it into this video. I'm sure they will. Also, a lot of people were like, oh my God, tell us what the topic is. And we're like, hmm. I don't know. Um, honestly, I think we should maybe cover it and we'll just do it very differently because it's kind of developing into a whole other story. Yeah, maybe one day we'll speak about it, but today's not that day. So we have two stories, both, I guess, TikTok related because one person is popular on TikTok and the other is like a streamer on TikTok and Twitch, I believe. One is definitely more lighthearted. We can like have a little chuckle. The other one has essay topics, like it's a topic of essay and someone being alleged. But I wanted to cover it for two reasons. One being that not a ton of people in our world is covering it because it's a Fortnite streamer. So, so it's, it's like my world. two worlds colliding. But also I feel like there's a larger conversation as far as streamers and their relationships with moderators in general and like what's appropriate and how that whole world is kind of weird to me. Like I don't really understand it. Like they work for free, right? Oh my God, that's my thing. Okay, wait, so should we start with that one? And then we end on is like a lighter note? one? That's yeah, a darker yeah, yeah, one. That. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so I have the same exact thought as you. I'm like, I understand what a moderator is. Like they can mute people. They're there to like filter the chat essentially and like make sure that the stream doesn't get too toxic and all that stuff. But it always goes so much deeper than that. Like they always seem to be doing a lot of work and they're obviously not being paid. And I'm just confused on what's in it for them other than like the social badge yes. of like, hey, I'm this person's moderator. Like. I don't yeah, know. Is that enough? And I feel the same way with like Reddit. Like Reddit moderators put in so much work and take it so seriously that I'm like, what's in it for you? People on Reddit in general take it so seriously. They'll like write full on dissertations. And I'm like, why wouldn't you put this somewhere? Like make a video. Yeah, they like cite their sources and it's like so thorough. We use Reddit all the time for like referencing. The reason why we are even talking about this today is because there's a Fortnite streamer by the name of Watery Shoe. I know. I know. Interesting choice. And here I go again. Okay, I feel like I always say this. I never liked him, ever. I swear, I would pass him on my For You page and I was just like, no thanks. Like he just gives icky vibes all the way. And he, like his main thing, you're not gonna understand this, it's called sky basing. So like, I don't build, like I play zero builds, but he plays builds. So what he does is he builds into the sky above all the players and like walks on this little ledge so nobody could see him. And then like shoots down on them when it's like the last, person he's fucking annoying is what it is it's just annoying it's like something that's allowed but like exactly kind of like stupid like fuck you yeah it's annoying like i don't really understand why people do that it's like just play the game normally i feel like that would mean you're not that good he's not bad at the game like he's not like the best player ever but he's not bad i mean if you play enough you're gonna be decent he also uses like i guess illegal skins where he uses like modified skins so like he'll play a squidward and like there is no squidward skin so you're using a 
hack essentially to be that skin in the game, which is not allowed. And he advertises it all over TikTok. Like today I'm using my exclusive Fortnite skin. And I'm like, huh, what? But if you're like not allowed, who, but like by who? By Epic Games. So like what what happens if they find out? You could get banned. Oh, it's, it's a serious offense. Oh my God, dude, Epic Games does not play around. And if you get banned, like hardware banned, you will never play the game again, ever on any like, you just, you're done. That feels hard to enforce. No, there's a, a streamer. He was very popular. His name was Jarvis and he was a huge Fortnite streamer and he did a YouTube video using aimbot like as a content thing. Like, oh, like I'm hacking using aimbot, but it was just like him trying to show people what aimbot is. He got banned. He hasn't played in three years. Couldn't you like go on someone else's account? or something? Anything that uses your IP address would be banned. Oh. Anything that is like in your premises, but then also like if you're a streamer and you like move or get a new IP address and they find out, they'll ban you. So if you're a streamer and you get hardware banned, you're fucked. But anyway, that's besides the point. I could talk about this all day, believe me. But- I was gonna say, I'm getting all the background context. <laughs> um, But Watery Shoe, not my favorite person. I know it's giving like toe fungus. Like, I don't even know what the fuck that means. Like, I'm just thinking like- <laughs> Like, I think like wet sock, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was gonna say, I can just hear the squishing. Yeah, the pruny it. toes, that's what it's giving. And also that's pretty fitting for him. He's he's giving a water issue. So a user by the name of Tripmatic, I am unsure what her real name is. Hopefully it says it's somewhere in here because everybody usually goes by their usernames, so it's kind of hard to tell. But anyway, she posted a tweet that said, the truth about the assaults regarding water issue. And it's this pretty long Google doc we don't have to read through the entire thing because it's like Jesus. five pages. I know. I did read all of it, but the pertinent parts are that she was a moderator for Christian, who is Watery Shoe, and she got pretty close to him and his girlfriend, Alexa. Now, Alexa, one second we could talk about her. Her username is dyslexic. That's a choice, right? I thought that was weird. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Um, also, never really cared for her. She is very, very, she's got a stank ass attitude. I'll just say that much. She is not, she doesn't seem very nice. And that's just when she's playing Fortnite. I don't know anything about her personally. Like just when I see them playing, I'm like, uh, remind me not to play with you guys. So she said that back in January, she met them both, okay, at a TikTok event in LA for the first time. She had been a moderator of Christian's stream for around five months at this time. She says, I had known him and his girlfriend pretty well. I was ecstatic to meet them and we had a great time in LA celebrating Christian's accomplishments and getting to know each other more. Nothing out of the ordinary happened on that trip. So after that trip, she was invited to go visit them in March of 2023 and to stay at their house, which is a leap, I feel like for a streamer to do with their moderator. Like, I just feel like that's I'm weird. As how well. often does he stream? He used to stream every day. He hasn't been since all this came out and something else that we're going to talk about. Was she moderating it every day? Usually they do. I'm just talking about what other streamers, you know, have going on. I see the same moderators every day at different times of the day. They will stay in there for hours and hours and hours. I even know some that have kids that are in there constantly. And listen, oh, I watch why? stream. I know. I don't really get the whole reasoning behind it or what's in it for them. But like I watch streams all day. Like I really do, like I'll be working and editing and I have someone playing Fortnite, but that's different than like actively being in the chat, muting people. I don't read the chat. I don't look at anything. I'm just like barely even listening to it just like to like distract noise. me. Exactly. So I don't understand how people make this happen in their everyday life, like genuinely. They're like, some of them pay? No, like, no, no, they don't not, get paid. No, that's like not a thing. It's like a badge of honor. That's it. Uh, couldn't be me. And like, I even follow a streamer that I think he's great um, and I play with him every weekend. Actually, because uh, I subscribe to him and he plays with subscribers. It's kind of pathetic, but whatever. He has moderators that handle his like queue. So like when he's playing on TikTok, they're adding people in the queue and taking them out and like doing a bunch of- It's like an active job. Yeah, it's a bunch of like administrative shit. I'm like, why would you want to do that? I like, just, I, that I'm really failing to grasp. Same. I don't Educate us if you understand it. Cause I yeah. watch a lot of streamers and I still don't fucking get it. There's even this uh, one like older, guy who he talks about how he never like really moderates people like he has very limited moderators he's like but my moderators that i do have they work tirelessly for me they are great i'm like what is Why? going on yeah i don't know 
Like, I feel like I wouldn't do that for a job I was paid for. I know, right? Like, if you even, like, offered me to do that for, like, 12 bucks an hour, I'd tell you no. Do they ever get followers from doing it? I'm sure. I I think that the number one thing that they get is their streamers, like, direct attention. And also, almost always, they have, like, their own moderator chat where they talk, like, exclusively to the streamer. And they, like discuss the next business thing they need to do or like you know what they need to like this is a job i I know this is weird okay but also yeah the chat like i know all of the moderators for that one streamer i'm talking about like i know them by name they're always in there they're always chatting and then they also get this like weird level of authority where like if someone disrespects one of the moderators the streamer will be like hey like you don't come for the mod like it's just weird i don't know it's strange just a a parasocial relationship right and honestly how many times do we see streamers getting exposed for being inappropriate with their moderators very often because it is a blurred weird ass fucking line where it's like at the very least you're exploiting them for free labor and then at the most you're like being wildly inappropriate and then there's this extreme version of it where it's like oh you're like literally a demon that is like assaulting your moderator what the fuck is happening and honestly i do want to correct i don't know for a fact that there's not a moderator out there that gets paid but i know yeah. the majority of them do not get paid that's not the standard yeah, by it's any not. means no so basically right before this trip to stay with them. She was told that they had broken up. And mind you, they live together. So she was like, uh, that's awkward as fuck. Like, I'm gonna go visit you guys and you guys are broken up. And she said that she felt like pretty awkward doing that, but she decided to go ahead and go anyway because she had booked her flight and she was friends with both of them. So she's like, okay, it'll be fine. And she said that like literally from the first night she got there, they were already arguing and she was like playing moderator weirdly enough she was like the mediator of them moderator mediator (laughs) yeah she was like mediating the conversation for them which is so wildly inappropriate even if you have like i wouldn't want to have my mom do that with like me and my husband it's like you're not our therapist like why you know whatever then she said everything went on to be normal they went to bush gardens they had a good time and then they wanted to end their night at a club and at that club she got very 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 drunk and she said that the bartender messed up one of her drinks and felt bad for her so so she gave her like a glass of vodka, which I'm like, how is that a reward? Yeah, literally, I was just projectile. But she gave it to her as like, a, oh, my bad, which I totally see happening because sometimes college, bartenders... I would have been thrilled. But she drank it, even though she said she was already intoxicated before she received that glass from the bartender. And she said after that, she just completely blacked out. Like it was really bad. She says that she only remembers bits and pieces, but she was told by Watery Shoe, Christian, that he had to literally like carry her out of the club because she was so drunk. She says she's never been that drunk before in her life. And she says that also like a weird fact is that earlier in that night, Christian had been talking about how he basically like doesn't get that drunk. Like liquor really doesn't affect him. And like, he's never really been that that drunk he's able to handle his liquor really well and she says looking back now that like really fucking disturbs her so she says after he carried her out of the club they went back to their house and they played a game she says some sort of adult card game soon after i remember them both trying to convince me to have a threesome with them she says that she felt really uncomfortable she had like friend zone christian before she claimed like that she always let them know that she was not romantically interested in either one of them but she says that she remembers being in their bed and she remembers christian i don't really want to get into like her experience because it is graphic and whatever but the fact is it wasn't consensual the next day she woke up and was like disgusted because she knew that she had had intercourse with this person but also knew that she was like really drunk and didn't want to do that but then she had that like rationale like well i was really drunk maybe it was my fault for getting that drunk and you know whatever you have that whole fucking dilemma which is fucking not because if you're intoxicated you've made it clear before that you don't want to have intercourse with that person and that person is not intoxicated already that intoxicated versus not is it for me. Like, I'm like, that's all I really need to know. So she woke up the next day again. She felt weird. She felt disgusted, but she decided to like, okay, fuck it. Let's just have a good time. I'm gonna brush that past me and we're just gonna move forward. So they ended up going out that night again. She said the night started off normal. Oh, by the way, that intercourse the night prior, I guess Alexa was a part of it too. So it was a threesome. So it was watery shoe dyslexic and her she said that while on a walk with christian and alexa christian made a side comment suggesting that alexa only went along with the threesome so that she could have his phone password 
like making a joke out of it, I guess. And she was disgusted, obviously, because at this point she considered Alexa one of her really close friends. And she's like, what the fuck? Why would you even let that happen to me? I was so drunk, whatever. They wanted to go to another club that night. They did. She said, Christian bought a private table at the club and it came with a bottle that we shared. We were all ordering separate drinks from the bar as well. I was cautious, but still in denial that I had been assaulted. Since we were out with a larger group, I thought similar events definitely wouldn't occur. I was very wrong. I got drunk, but was cautious to not black out. Me and Alexa snuck off to the bathroom, just typical girl things. While we were in the bathroom, Alexa randomly started talking about her ex and how she wanted him to come over and for all of us to hang out after the club. She was very persistent. She called him while we were in the bathroom, begging him to come over and make the long drive to their place. This was all very weird to me. Yeah, no shit. That is fucking weird. So I guess she was trying to get back at Christian. You know what I mean? She wanted her ex to come in and just fucking make a disaster. She said, I wasn't sure if she was trying to set me up with her ex or what was going on. She made it clear that she understood. She said that if the vibes weren't good, that I didn't have to do anything I don't want to. So she said that made her not want to drink anymore, especially since she was already drunk. What makes me feel bad is throughout the statement, she keeps talking about how in denial she was and why she continued on because the fact of the matter is she was assaulted twice. So she gets assaulted this night as well. And she feels like it's her fault because she kept herself in a situation where that happened again. And it's fucking not. Not only, God, I could go on and on on the list of why it's not her fault, but are you kidding me? This is a fucking person that, talk about power dynamic, like literally yeah. not even the, just the streamer aspect, you're in their home in a different state. I was just gonna say, and she's not like, it's not like she could just like take a cab home or something. Cab, no. Oh um, An Uber home or something. Like she doesn't have a flight out until she's planning on leaving. So it's like, if she didn't go, that would have been super awkward to be like, I'm just gonna stay home. Yeah. Absolutely. So Alexa's friend and ex ended up showing up and she says they were being super touchy and uncomfortable and they ended up driving Alexa and her back to Christian's place. They continued to make her feel so uncomfortable that she ended up locking herself in a bathroom because she felt so weird and she texted Christian saying that the guys were making her uncomfortable, which by the way, we do have these texts. She did post them. Basically, Alexa ended up coming to the bathroom after those texts were sent and she just tried to convince her that everything was fine. And then eventually, like when she wasn't calming down. Alexa was like, fine, we'll tell him to leave. And she said, I was relieved that at least one of them was leaving. I felt obligated to come out of the bathroom despite feeling uncomfortable. Her ex forced himself onto me. She never gave consent. And then she says that the ex and Christian were taking turns. And then it says Christian swapped places with the with Alexa's ex. He had mentioned he could tell I was uncomfortable with the ex and then proceeded to assault me as well. As if it was like, well, she's uncomfortable with him. Let me do it. I know that this is a lot. I know it's graphic. I know it's triggering. I know all of that. And the reason why I wanted to cover this is because she went public with this. Her story deserves to be heard. Like her, this tweet hasn't gone viral. He's not really paying the price for this. I'm sure legally nothing's gonna happen. And I just felt like I really wanted to share her story because she put it out there. And I think that she wants it heard. Like she, she's facing this person who has way more followers, is a fucking dick and it's scary. And I just wanna show her any support that I possibly can. Now let's take a quick look at not only some text messages that she shows that proves these people are super weird, but his response and Alexa's response on stream and the things they've said in response to her coming out about them assaulting her. I just can't get over that this was their moderator. Yeah, this is a person that worked for free for them for five fucking months of her life. So this person, mind you, this is on fucking Twitch. Hello, can you get banned? Like seriously, get the fuck off of Twitch. This is so ridiculous that this is allowed on that platform. I'm upset. She posted this and it says, watery shoe bragging on stream about the assault. Oh my God. Can break it down. Hey, the next guy's gonna be happy too, because I had to teach her some things too. I had to stop, be like, hey, instead of this, do this, because this, you know, eh. He literally has an OnlyFans too. I'm sorry, she has an OnlyFans too, so that makes it okay. Well, you know how these people operate and what they think, because oh what that sentence said to me is she's a sex worker. How can she be assaulted? Like, that's what that said to me. And the girlfriend, Alexa, the one that was on the left, which they're together again. So happy for you guys. Hope it works out. Ash, she's a pussy. I knocked somebody. Unblock me. Fucking call my ass. Oh, right here. Pussy. Right here. Talk to me in person about it since you're so fucking scared and sad. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Scared and sad. Boom, bitch. Dumb bitch. That's them talking about her. She's Ash, I guess, is her name. I don't know why I didn't know that sooner. But she basically just says, you're a fucking pussy. Talk to me about it in person instead of basically posting about it online. She's posting a lot about how he's really inappropriate with his references and stuff when it's like a, a bunch of children who follow him and watch him play fucking Fortnite. And he 
just puts a lot of weird captions and says a lot of sexual like innuendos when there's like fucking 11 year olds there. Most streamers either they try to be family friendly for the most part or like at the worst they're just cursing but they're usually not like overtly sexual or anything like that because it is a younger audience on Twitch and like just watching people game in general usually. Like literally <laughs> the streamer that I play with on the weekends like children will hop on and it'll be like an eight-year-old being like okay can you pass me this gun like literally it's children okay i see that i don't like that, that i know i know usually it's kids of the parents that are subscribed so like they'll be there i guess but i don't know that i <sighs> I don't know. I think it's all fucking very blurry, very weird and can get so bad so quick for sure. But yeah, basically that was her accusations. She shows some text messages as well. Like she showed the text message of her telling Christian that she was in the bathroom and she felt uncomfortable. That all was posted. But what was interesting is that he simultaneously got canceled for something else at the same time, which was annoying, not well, I mean, because- that's not that shocking. Well, no, not shocking. But to me, it was kind of annoying just because I'm like, oh shit, she's not gonna get, like people aren't gonna hear her story. It like overshadowed yeah. it. Yeah, and it's not even remotely as bad as this. Although it is a bannable offense on Twitch, which is hate rating, which means that you're sending your followers to another streamer to- shit on them, basically. That's what he got canceled for. This small, genuine streamer, Polvi, was playing with his friend Babywalk, who's a partner on Twitch. They were playing the game and having fun, and Polvi got a bounty on Watery Shoe. And obviously, a lot of people already know who he is because he has such a huge following. They were even saying nice things about him because they've seen his content and streams before. Bro, you see where our bounty's on? Who is it? Watery Shoe, bro. No, he's cracked, bro. I know, bro. He's insane. And then they pushed the bounty. So they actually did kill him in-game, by the way, YouTube, not in real life. And so what they did was they camped his card. That's what it's called. So when you die, and you're like on a team you get a reboot card but it expires after like a certain amount of seconds so they waited on it so that he couldn't get rebooted which is pretty common it's fucking annoying when people do it but it's common like people do that all the time and he literally like went to this guy's chat while he's live and said like oh you're never gonna get any viewers playing like this and he basically doing that sent all his following to this person who were like you're a piece of shit you suck you're this and that and his chat was just flooded with that they know who i am that's why how do you know i go into his stream and he says who y'all camping oh he's a streamer <laughs> great so he's stream sniping you what a loser I, went, so I went into his chat, I said you'll never get more than two viewers playing like this. I'm reporting him. He's so fucking stupid. <laughs> dog shit chat. What was it? Pete? Yeah, fucking dog shit. Not everyone from your chat telling him he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Ruin the win streak, stream sniping. Mm -hmm. Not his whole, whole chat being filled with us, being so toxic. Alright, don't, don't talk about it because you'll get banned. You're not allowed to do that. Talk about anything toxic about another streamer. You'll get banned. I went into his chat. I said, you'll never get more than two viewers playing like this. And honestly, it's pretty sad when a bigger creator talks down on a smaller creator. But anyways, make sure to show some love. And that's called hate rating, right? So he was canceled for this. He posted on TikTok recently. I'll give you a guess on which cancellation he addressed. Spoiler alert, it's not the sexual this whole thing is so gross. Right? I know. Literally, I almost, and I never fucking comment on TikToks, but I felt so tempted to be like, that's not the question I had. Like, that's not the cancellation I heard about because it was so annoying that this is what he addressed. But uh, let's see if you get a vibe uh, from him and let me know what that vibe is. Yeah, we, I haven't seen him really yet. I couldn't really Today, see him. Today, I got canceled. Video. That means there's free views on the table. <laughs> I'm gonna take them. So six days ago, me and my girlfriend Alexa were playing some duos and we just happened to go on a big win streak. All right, come on, we gotta win this now. That is until we ran into this guy. 60, 60 white, 60 white, 60 white. Da, 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 da. Now, once I die, the first thing I do is tell my girlfriend to run away. Uh, okay. you have shocks? Run, run, run if you have shocks. Run if you have shocks. Yeah. Cause there's no way she's 1v2. And she played it perfectly. Behind you, there's a bush. My first time dying in five games. She got in a bush, she was safe. Now, here's when we realized there was something fishy. Are they, are they like looking for, what are they doing up there? Are they really gonna camp your card? It's a public match. Why are they camping a card? This kind of sucks. Four minutes later, they are still on my card, jumping up and down. We're on this card for the 260 seconds, my boy. Trust that. Trust. I'm gonna sit right here under this cone. And I'm like, this is a public match. Nobody does this in public matches. So I went over to the guy's stream, and this is the first thing I see. So obviously, seeing as we just got stream sniped to end our win streak, I say something dub, just in the rage of things. And oh no, when I died, his username showed up on screen. So seven whole people went into his chat and said camping cards are weird. Oh, cancel me.
Do you want to be friends with him? No, no. <laughs> um, not even a little bit. He seems so cool. Why not? What are he... <sighs> There's some, I have, ask away, sister. I feel like I am watching someone speak another language. I know, I um, know. <laughs> did he say, I decide, did he pull a dub? Is that what he said? <laughs> that's what, that's what your question is. Yeah. Um, no, I, that was one of the main things I didn't under, uh, what, I don't know what's Pull a dub on. is like winning. I do, but. Oh. Catch that dub, uh, you feel me? I, he just seems like such a tool. Yeah, he is a fucking tool. He really is. And people all in the chat are like slamming him and being like, that's not even the whole story because the other guy was a streamer and so he was live and everybody could see the whole thing and he's like showing a very, very small part of it so that it looks all right in his opinion. But even then, it's like, no, you on live went to this person's chat and you knew that was gonna draw attention to this person. And the guy literally showed the chat. It was not seven comments. It was a bunch of people. So it's just like really manipulative and he's lying. And listen, he is a pretty decently sized streamer. I mean, 500,000 TikTok followers for a streamer is a lot. So he's getting a lot of money, a lot of views. He has people on Twitch. I'm not sure if he's a Twitch partner, but like he has done multiple things that he should be banned for on Twitch. But at the very least can we all like not forget that he allegedly assaulted someone like i feel like that's at the top list of being the absolute fucking worst thing that he's done maybe the gaming community is just like i don't want to like characterize men as not giving a shit about sa but like a lot of times especially in the gaming community it is pretty bad like people will say things like it have you ever seen those call of duty streamers seriously yeah there's like cool um streamers who are women who post people being like oh i hope you get AIDS and like just really horrible shit. And they're just like really mean and awful. So I don't know that the gaming community would care the most about this, but the woman is receiving like at least some support. And I think a lot of people realize that this person is uh, a douchebag. I mean, you could tell. Yeah, but honestly, I just wanted to talk about it. Not only because it's like my two worlds colliding. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? And this is a big deal right now in the Fortnite world. But also, I just wanted to show this woman support and amplify her story in any possible way because fuck this guy. Like, no thanks, watery shoe. I always knew you were weird. It's already disturbing and then it's even more disturbing when you factor in the f that it's like a lot of kids watching. I know, yeah. That they probably don't even know what they're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, no, for sure. I know that was a lot and dark and I'm sorry and we can switch to our next topic, but all of our love and support goes to Ash and uh, wishing you well yeah. and I'm so sorry you went through that. I really, really And am. it is not your fault and don't be in denial anymore. No. Oh my God, the fact that you just said denial. I'm like, speaking of someone that is segue. in denial, <laughs> I hate to use that as a segue, but oh my God, the next person we're talking about is in denial, sister. And denial is not just a river in Egypt. Is that the saying? What the fuck? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So there is a bartender on TikTok by the name of Michelle. Do you know her? Let me show you her. And you've probably seen her face before. It's like, I, d I don't believe so. I don't follow any bartenders. <laughs> well, I actually never followed her, but she always came up on my For You page. She's pretty big on TikTok. She has 4.3 million followers. Her name on TikTok is Michelle Bell XO. And she made a lot of her content on being a bartender. So before she had a kid, she was working at this bar and she just would like share drink recipes or she'll reenact a lot like funny drunk stories from people, customers. Like interaction she has with customers. Yeah, yeah, she does this thing that's actually pretty funny. It's called drunk math where she'll show the receipts of customers and like their tips are so like <laughs> fucking convoluted that she doesn't know what they actually meant. I think that's funny. She does certain things that I'm like, oh, okay, period. But apparently she's much more problematic. Now, I wanna be honest, this is not about her past, but I have heard whisperings of some controversies there that we may dive into in the future. But for today, we're gonna stick to her most recent <laughs> virality on TikTok. And hey, yes, that okay. was a story time that she decided to share. The way I knew that it was gonna be some crazy shit is that Kathleen, my friend Kathleen, who never posts about drama ever, cause she's like scared of doing that. She's like, no, 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 I'm not gonna touch that with a 10 foot pole. She stitched it and literally, <laughs> That's what I saw first was a stitch of it. And she's saying like, I'm so sorry, but these are the kind of stories you keep to yourself, mama. Like, I don't know what to tell you. This is fucked up, basically. Oh no, I, oh God. TikTok and oversharing, it's like an epidemic. Right, I know. This video has 4.7 million views and all of TikTok has lost their collective shit over it. So let's just watch it and uh, oh yeah, God. see what you think. I have think. no idea what to expect. I just found out that my house almost got robbed on Tuesday night. Yeah, I thought about not telling you guys this story because it's, it's an embarrassing story for me and for my husband, but if it helps somebody, I'm gonna tell it. I know I've talked to you guys about how my husband doesn't drink because he can't drink 
because he can't stop. Like once he has one beer, he has to drink every beer there there is until they're all gone or the bar kicks him out or whatever. After that couple left that my husband invited over. That's called alcoholism. I just want to pause really quick. There is a word for that. Literally, when she said he can't drink, I was like, oh, like me. No, not like me. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, he, his stomach. Is it? Oh, he drinks every yeah. drink inside. Oh, alcoholic. I got it. Okay. Every beer there is. Like, that is the weirdest way to describe an alcoholic I've ever heard. Because it's, like, such a weird yeah. denial there that it's, like... Well, it's trying to, like, make light of it as if it's, like, not... Yeah. He has this weird symptom when he drinks a beer that he drinks every other beer in sight. It's, like, oh, I know what that's called. After that couple left that my husband invited over, he had had, like, eight beers during the time that they were at our house. And it wasn't very long. So after they left, I went to bed. By this time, it's, like, 11.30 p.m., and my husband still wanted to drink more and not by himself. So he Ubered up to a bar. I didn't even know he left, you guys. He gets home at 3.20 in the morning. 3.20 in the morning. The dogs start barking and the dogs don't bark at him. So I knew somebody was with him. So I get up out of bed and I'm immediately pissed off when I see the time, okay? I walk out there, I'm a raging bitch, okay? Because why the f <laughs> <laughs> my husband is like in the refrigerator trying to scrounge up something. I don't know what he's doing. I see this guy, he's walking around our whole house, scoping it out. But I didn't really think anything of that, right? And I'm just trying to get the dogs to stop barking so they don't wake up Ryder, our baby. I'm like, Justin. Oh my God. Do you know that it is 3.30 in the morning? What are you doing? Bringing random people over from the bar. Like what bar did you come from? He starts like mocking me. He, this is why he doesn't drink, okay? Anyways, I was, I, uh, he goes, oh, I, I should be passed out in a ditch in some bushes somewhere. Thank God this guy brought me home. I'm like, Justin, no, no, we do not do this. And I look at the guy and I'm like, thank you so much for bringing my husband home. I appreciate you. And at this point, the guy is like looking out our back window, like our back door, and he's like texting someone. And again, I didn't think anything of this like my husband is one of those people that whenever he gets whenever he gets any type of alcohol in him he trusts everyone everyone he, he was like this guy he's so nice this was all happening Wednesday morning at 3 30 in the morning fast forward to Wednesday early evening I go to the bar that my husband had spent the bar tab on my credit card right I saw the name of the bar I was like well let me go see and let me go apologize right? so I go there I order one beer before you know it the bartender is talking to somebody else about, a, she's describing a guy that sounds just like my husband. And I was like, wait, was he tall? And I like interjected a little bit. She turns to me and she's like, yeah. And she describes my husband. And I'm like, oh, my husband was here last night and I, that's him. She goes, oh, did you guys just move from Charlotte? And I said, yes, we did. She said, girl, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. And I'm like, what is she talking about? I'm like, girl, I'm not blaming anything on you. She goes, did you get robbed? And I said, no. What? Yeah, you better elaborate on that, okay? <laughs> Let's just, okay, what happened? She said, I'm so sorry. I begged them not to do it. And I'm like, not to do what? Beg who, what? She said, your husband, we had to cut him off. This is why he doesn't drink, okay? She keeps and saying that. Literally? I, like, so girl, there seems Uber. like a lot of reasons he doesn't him drink. Him and, Uber, and he wouldn't he wouldn't let me do it. He was like gonna get in the car with these dudes that were gonna bring him home. And she was like, and I knew that these guys were gonna rob him. And I begged them not to do it. What? So that's why that guy was scoping my house out? Huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't mad at her. I'm not mad at her at all. I tipped her very well. I was like, you just saved me a bunch of. I'm wait, 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 pause, pause, pause. <laughs> I, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. I have so many thoughts. I know the fact that she has said I think three times now. That's why my husband doesn't drink. Girl, he was drinking. Every reason she's saying he doesn't drink again is like he's an alcoholic yeah, because he gets like out of control and uh, like he like blacks out and trusts everyone. And remember, they have a child, a baby. He's like a little over one. He's like my daughter's age. That one I was gonna be my next point. She is treating him like he's a child. Like I know, no, literally oh the God. way she's like. I was talking to him. I'm like. Oh, so like how I talk to my dog? Yeah, li literally, literally. And also then why the fuck would she go to the bar to apologize? Like what? And by the way, this 
supposedly was on a Wednesday. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? So there's like so many elements to this. Obviously, again, anytime we discuss other people's relationships, there are different boundaries for those people. You know, I understand. There is no realm of possibility in which I leave my house without telling my husband like, hey, leaving and then come back at 3.20 in the morning, even if I was by myself. That would be weird and unacceptable in my relationship if he did it or if I did it. That's, we have children. I, like we gotta I be up at eight. If I had a roommate, that did that, right? I would be upset. That's like, so <laughs> true. But like, you're telling me you brought a random guy to your house with your child. I'm not even joking when I say my husband would never forgive me for that. Even if there was no robbery possibility, no anything weird that happened. No, it's just sketchy as He fuck. would never forgive me for that. He is so like anal about the safety of our family that there's just no world in which he'd ever be okay with that, which obviously she's not okay with it either, but not even close to as not okay with it as my husband is. Like she's... Whatever. But listen, it's okay, Lily, because he feels really bad about it. Oh my <laughs> God. Lots of things. Cause I haven't got my security system installed yet. I had already cashed out at that point. I just had one beer and I cashed out and I get in the car and I call my well, husband a, and I'm like, it was a Wednesday. Here. So yeah, you being so naive and trusting everyone because you're a dude and you think that I'm being paranoid because I don't want anybody that we don't know personally in our house. This is why he is taking it so seriously. You guys, he's, he didn't sleep at all last night. I was like, good, as you shouldn't have, because you are the one, you're, you've caused this. You're supposed to be our protector and our provider and everything, and you are not protecting us by bringing some random people over to our house. And I'm like so scared because I'm thinking that they're gonna come and back out at a different Wednesday. time and know, and like with other people, not just the one guy, and know what they're gonna take. And I'm just, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm getting my security system installed tomorrow though, so it'll be okay. I don't think that's gonna help if he lets them in. <laughs> True, but um, my biggest thing, not my biggest thing, I think I have several big things with this, but- I was like, what, what is it? Let's not forget that the, this starts off with her saying like, this is really embarrassing, but like, if this helps even one person, who is this helping? You? Yeah, who is it helping? And also like, you almost got robbed. Why wouldn't they have robbed you? Girl, then? I'm so confused this is so this robbing far beyond from. oversharing, but also, and a lot of people pointed this out, that bartender sketch as fuck. What do you mean you knew they were gonna rob? Like, like, I feel like the bartender's well, in I'm on asking. it. I'm like, where did this robbing narrative come from? Did they go, hi, bartender, can we close out? We're gonna go rob this guy. Like, I, that, or did she just assume that's what was gonna happen? If I'm being honest, I think the bartender's possibly in on it and like scopes out people that they need to cut off. And like, that's who they like flag to be a person for those people to go rob. Like that totally makes sense. More sense to me than them picking out a random person. The bartender knows who's the most fucked up, getting them more fucked up, then finally cuts them off and it's like, okay, take this one. Like, like, I don't know. I feel like that's pretty... Or she just, like, assumed that they were going to take advantage of him because he was so fucked up. Yeah, maybe she, like, heard in their town that those people were, like, robbers. I don't fucking know. But the point is, she says she knew. My thing is, like, you're saying, like, I had nothing to do with it. Like, okay, girl, relax. Like, I feel like that's weird. And she says that she did notice the guy was sketchy and, like, looking through the back and on his cell phone and texting people and being weird. Like, he wasn't acting normally. So she noticed that. But it wasn't until the bartender told her this that she realized, oh, my God, I was gonna get robbed basically well and then but they they didn't they didn't rob him but also you have to take into account there's two different things there's one maybe they thought that he lived alone and then they realized okay his wife is out now they have a dog they have a child this is like way different than we thought or number two they were scoping it out for the future so that happens a lot too yeah. where people scope out your house to see what the vibe Casing is the joint. Ex yeah. exactly so Either or could have taken place. They could have decided let's not do this um, or not. I don't know. But the point is the internet told her, ma'am, get those papers and sign them. You need to divorce this guy now <laughs> before it's too late. I also have a question that is so not one of the most important things here. Okay. But where is she filming this? She has her purse on her shoulder. Is it like she was going across? Like, I'm just going to film a quick story time. Like where the, Honestly, what the fuck is Honestly, I don't know. This? She's an interesting one. Even the way you could tell the way she's like animated when she says it. It. She's an interesting gal. I'll say that. She's not excusing it, but the way she keeps calling out, they're like, this is why he doesn't drink. I repeat, he he did drink though. That's why we're here. That's why we've all gathered here today. Um, I'm so confused. What the fuck? How old are they? Uh, In their 30s. I'm not sure exactly how old, but they're in their 30s. Like way too old to be, because I'm like, in college, I'll say it, when I get really drunk, I am too trusting of people as well. Luckily, that has never resulted in me getting almost robbed or robbed or anything. But I also didn't have a baby. And uh, what? Yeah. Well, everyone was 
shocked. The majority of people were saying, leave this in your brain and don't let it out. Like this is not something we should or know maybe about. Bring it to a therapist. Yeah, definitely bring it to a therapist. But a lot of people were like, girl, divorce. Like this is so, like an unforgivable act essentially where it's like, how do you come back from this where again, your partner puts you and your child in danger? Like that's well, just way Jesse, beyond. He couldn't, he couldn't sleep though. Yeah, he was really scared and worried and he was like, oh my God, what did I it's do? probably because he was too hungover. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Um. So yeah, the comments needless to say are absolutely- The one that says out of on a Wednesday? Oh honey, that's, that's not. <laughs> oh my God, literally someone says what you've been saying. You keep saying your husband doesn't drink. Someone said as oh, someone that's, that's been the sleep sleeping child in this situation. I wish my mom had left sooner. We remember more than you think we will. I know you got your following um, on YouTube from story times and like I've done several story times, but like, how do you think this is a good thing to listen to a story time? I agree. I think that we've talked about this, how there's a few creators on TikTok that overshare so fucking much. Literally, I, I follow this one girl and I'm not trying to call anyone out, you know, do whatever is comfortable for you, I guess. Go off girl. But there was this girl who I follow who was posting like sexts that her husband would send her of like, yeah, I want to give you this D and like talking about it as if like, oh my God, my husband's basically such a horny bastard. And it's like, maybe we just don't do this. <laughs> like I just fucking feel insane. When you think about how much people develop like parasocial relationships and how much they like feel entitled to information mm -hmm. about your relationship when you don't give any and when you're very like minimal about what you share, this feels like you're inviting people into your relationship. And she is because she literally got told a million times what she needs to do, which most people were saying yeah. leave and most people were stitching it just being like literally just staring in the camera like the bar is in hell oh, no. what's the next one yeah so she responded to one of the many comments saying that she needs a divorce and this was her response you know what's so fucking stupid is that y'all are giving me advice like this have you never made a mistake when you were drunk it was a pretty serious mistake and i get that and so does my husband he understands that too we did not get robbed Probably because my crazy ass came out there and we have dogs and then the guy probably saw all the little the little kid toys and was like, oh, this he's got a wife and she's not drunk. And look, he's got a kid and look, they have dogs and they don't sound small. I think my husband is lucky that I came out all sober and bitchy in this case because I done saw his face. And I had dogs barking in the background. Because you know what I think he was planning on doing? I think he was planning on waiting for my husband to pass out. And then he was going to rob him. But he didn't realize he was coming home to a wife and a kid and dogs. And I saw his face. Like, that made things probably more complicated. I think that's the problem with our society now, though. Is that everybody <laughs> thinks that if somebody messes up, that they need a divorce. Like, my husband is taking full responsibility for this. He realizes uh, how? what he's done. We do love each other. And that is a choice that you make in marriage. And we're yeah, doing our best. But we just yes. moved from a city that my husband has never lived outside of. And I've been living in Charlotte since 2006. So yeah, we're stressed the fuck out. But before you judge somebody else, maybe you should remove the log in your own eye. Because <laughs> if you've never made a mistake, ever in your life, then come talk to me. And marriage does take work every single day. But didn't I say for better or for worse? Yeah, this is the worst. This was a huge wake up call for him. Now he understands why I don't want people over at our house that we don't know. I don't know why it took this for him to understand it, but either way, he has it drilled in his brain now. And he will never do it again, I know. I know he won't. This is the most out of pocket crazy response because how do you act so upset and annoyed when you put this out on the internet for everyone to respond to? Why did you even have to tell us if you're going to be so annoyed of people's response to the batshit craziness that was your husband and what he did? And also, you forgot to mention the part where he is an alcoholic. Because by the way, <laughs> if you didn't know this, you don't have to drink every day to be an alcoholic. You could just be someone who cannot control themselves whenever they do have a drink. And drinks every beer in sight. Exactly. Exactly. That is something he needs help with and that's okay. But you're like, he made a mistake. He sees what happened. He now knows I don't want random people in my house. What about the part where he can't control himself when he drinks? That's a very alarming thing. Literally, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, okay, so maybe he won't make that 
specific mistake, but what's he gonna do next time? Yeah. Like, the fact that she addressed his drinking problem in, I mean, albeit a weird way, so many times in the story time, and now is acting like that isn't the problem? Like, this is absurd. Right? And the, the comments, you know, they don't disappoint. One of them says, it's a canon event, y'all. You know what a canon event is? Recently, someone told me yes. Yeah, basically, it is an event that in the future, you're gonna look back on and be like, oh my god, that was basically the start of it all, essentially. It's sad also to watch her kind of like struggling to defend her husband who is indefensible in this situation. Like, this is absolutely wrong why do you keep telling us more information like just stop That's like everything just stop right someone said in quotes they quote her and say have you made a mistake while drunk? And they go, yeah, falling, not bringing strangers home to my family. That's the thing. Like, girl. Like, this is not a mistake. This is something that could have potentially ended your life. What if that person was a freaky, yeah. like, killer? And, like, even if you wanted to not get a divorce, if you were, like, he understands, like, okay, well, get him into a rehab or something, because clearly that is the root of the issue. Don't dismiss it, like, oh, he knows that he, he has it drilled into his brain now. The brain that gets so drunk that he trust everyone yeah. like the awareness is um Not, non-existent but she posts again because remember she said that she was getting her security system installed the next day which i repeat is not gonna help if your trusting husband lets them in well do you also think it would help if you tell everyone in depth everything about your security system oh no fernando who's installing our security system his wife knows me from tiktok <laughs> that's fernando what's your wife's name misty Hi, Misty. Do not worry, because now, if they do come back, good luck to them. Because Fernando hooked us up over here. We have glass break sensors on every single window in our house. We have indoor motion detectors. Anytime somebody opens a door. Did you hear that? Yeah. We have a doorbell camera. I'm about to go out the back door. Right. We have three outdoor cameras, like that. All of the outdoor cameras have light like motion detector lights on them that will follow um. you <laughs> as you walk around. And if you stay in the light longer than 10 seconds when our alarm is set, it'll flash at you and we'll be alerted. Yeah, ain't nobody coming near my house without me knowing about it. And then the authorities being alerted. Our security system is top notch. Okay, I feel, I feel so safe. Someone yeah. said, are you gonna post the code in the next video? <laughs> Funny enough, Mama Tot actually commented on this TikTok and said, friend, you've given out too much info in the internet. And then someone else said, if Mama Tot's saying it's too much info, it's too much info. Dude, how could she not realize that telling the exact locations of her cameras, how long the light stays on before it alerts them, that is so dumb. I couldn't hear it super loudly or see, like, I'm not looking that closely, but like, could you tell what brand the security system is? Oh, I don't know. Oh my God, yeah, because then they'd be able to hack it, huh? Yeah, that's like how a lot of people get through, like get past security systems. But again, the security system doesn't matter if your drunk husband's gonna let them in. Yeah, he's like, oh no, not the security system. It's him just disabling it. <laughs> One thing that I always found weird about her, and this was even before all of this, is that she always shared the place that she worked at and her schedule, always. She always did that. So she was always like, hey guys, like I'm gonna be here from 12 to five tomorrow or something. What? Yeah. And she has how many followers? Uh, 4.5 million. Holy shit. I know. And she always did that. And people were like, hey, be careful. And she's like, don't even worry about it because we have security and we have this, that, and the other. And she's always had a very lax like energy around her safety. And it's weird as fuck because I mean, hello, Christina Grimmie. Like, do we not remember what the internet's capable of in harboring weird ass parasocial relationships that end people's lives? Like, this is fucked. And you have a kid now. Like, someone could easily Easily, and I mean easily. Find where she is, follow her home, that's it. Now they know everything about her security system, so and it wouldn't be that to hard to get in. And not that, she, like, isn't this the whole reason your husband was in the wrong? Like, you didn't seem to care about the drinking problem that much. You cared about him being not conscious about your security. She's not conscious about her own. Oh my yeah, God, it's, it's so insane. weird. Okay, so they just moved to a new town, right? So that means that she needs to find a new place to bartend at. She not only fully has said that she plans on filming and saying where she works and all that stuff, she's even filming where she's thinking about working. Still searching for the right place to work. So earlier today, I went on Google and I decided to look up places that are hiring for experienced bartenders. And I came across, what do y'all think about me working at a bowling alley? Okay, so I came across Strike and Barrel. 
I really do think that it could be so fun. So they said they were hiring for experienced bartenders. So she then goes in, shows the place. How easy is it to, I'm pretty sure she shared where she's moved, but I have no interest in sharing that. How easy is it to be like strike and barrel this city or when she says she works at a bar? I mean, she literally has encouraged people like, hey, come out, come see me and I'll be your bartender. What the fuck? I am so like, Confused. I bet you she uses her TikTok as a way to like convince them to hire her. So she'll be like, I'll bring you business. Oh yeah. And I, for some reason, I'm not like a part of her snark Reddit page, but I'll get notifications for it sometimes. Like Reddit will send me like random snark pages. I'm like, okay. Um, so for hers, I saw some people talking about how she said that basically she made two buck, which is her uh old bar like she made that place like she saved it and then like so many customers come because of her and people found that like very annoying but like yeah I think she prides herself on bringing customers to the bar that she works at it feels really juvenile doesn't it like to be like hey come and see me like at my job like it just feels like this weird popularity contest thing that is inappropriate for not only her age but like her family like can we just can you not everyone knows what her kid looks like the city she lives in the places she's gonna work at everyone's gonna know two days later i got the job i now work at uncle jesse's honky tonk in raleigh it's on glenwood avenue you won't be able to find it on your google maps you know where five points is they call it five points because it's like five roads that come together it's right next to lone rider the way that i got the job let me just tell you so i walk in i see the owner i've already met her before she's the one that anheuser bush beer vendor gave me her number. They weren't hiring, but then she said, send her on over. I loved the vibes. I felt like I was already part of some family that I didn't know I had. I even texted all of the Two Buck Saloon staff today. And I was like, y'all won't believe this. I found a Two Buck Saloon in Raleigh. Oh my God. And now her entire security system. I am just like, oh girl, maybe just stop. Just stop for a second. And she doesn't seem like the receptive type. N no, no, she <laughs> does not. I'm just flashing back to the husband. It was normal for him to go get blacked out on a Wednesday. Well, that's what she's saying is like, I guess that it wasn't normal. Like she was trying to rationalize it at the same time that she was trying to say that it was fucked up. But like, yeah, you don't do that shit anymore when you have kids. My cousin who I play Fortnite with is single and childless. And I'll never forget. He's like, he used to live in the city that I live in. He's like, oh, have you been to this bar? I've lived here for like two and a half, three years. And I'm like, I don't go to bars, Benji. Like I don't go anywhere. And he's just like, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't go out anywhere. I stay home all the time. Like that's having children. I have both people I know and I've even had followers. I feel like someone DM'd me one time. It was like, hey girl, I'm going to be in LA for the weekend. What are some good bars I should go to? And oh I was my. like, hmm. I didn't respond, but I'm like <laughs> thinking, the thing is, I don't remember the last time I've gone to a bar or like, what do you do for fun? Nothing. I know. I saw this and I knew we had to talk about it because I was flabbergasted and just the collective internet like there's so many funny stitches and stuff from it because people were just like you should have kept that in the drafts this is not something that someone could have tortured out of me another thing that she like that feels kind of juvenile is that it feels like she framed the entire thing like the reason she shared it was so she could be like hmm, told you it was fucked up to her husband but okay, at the same yeah. time she didn't want to make it seem too bad because then it looks bad on her too so she was trying to justify it but then also like get people to be You're on her so team. spot on about that. Like that is totally the energy around it because when I saw the second one, especially where she's like, it's burned in his brain. I'm like, why is he okay with you posting this right now? This is so, like, this is so I fun. was also going to ask, do we ever see the husband? Is he prominent on her? He's not prominent on the page, but we have seen him. He's like the super tall guy that's like bearded and he, you know, he seems okay. People literally just say that he's a man child because everything she shared about him has been him being a man child. Like I saw one like literally just going down where she was like, if you want to get your husband to clean the house, all you have to do is say that you're hosting Bible study at your house and then he'll finally clean and I'm like so your husband sucks I don't know dude it was so weird and honestly obviously I hope she's safe and her family's safe but I would either need to move out of my fucking house or I would need a divorce or at least couples therapy at the very least I would be like that's the thing I'm like we need help one you shouldn't have shared that because it's fucking weird two you seem to not be grasping the larger issue at hand here and also the fact that she refers to alcoholism as he has this problem where he just drinks every beer in sight feels concerning I feel like there's a lot of bartenders that are even sober but it seems crazy that her husband would be an alcoholic and she would be a bartender and not only that she does drink a lot which like live your life girly but like yeah she does drink often and she's always making drinks in her house and showing like they have a lot of liquor in the house and i don't know what again 
level of denial she's in because maybe he doesn't drink frequently, but that's not indicative of whether you're an alcoholic or not. It's the ability to control yourself once you have a drink. Yeah. And alcoholics can't stop drinking. So whether that's on a one day span or every single day, it's still the same problem that could progress. And you have a kid, you need to stop. Like, it's just too yeah. much. Well, in the way she describes it, she doesn't act like every time he drinks, he brings like random people home that are going to rob them. But it does seem like it happens frequently enough that this wasn't really out of the ordinary and that it was just like happened to be worse than normal. Yeah, if my husband left and came back at 3.20 in the morning, that would be the most freaky situation. I'd be like, what? You did what? Like, it's so out of the ordinary. But she's like, so he went out because he didn't want to drink alone. And then he came back. I'm like, what? What do you mean? And then what did he bring the guy back for? Like, yeah, he gave him a ride. But then he just invited him in. He was going to make him some food. Like, I don't under. You're yeah. 30 with a child. What? This isn't college. He said that he would have been in a ditch if it wasn't for that guy. That guy was like his savior. Cool. Are you going to have him move in and be your roommate now? I'm confused. But anyway, that is all I've got for you today. Today's TikTok disaster dump. I I don't know what the fuck the title of this is going to be, but Jesus. I'm telling you, that is one thing that TikTok seems to have bred more of is just people feeling really emboldened to just share everything because I think that there's some stuff that people overshare that it's like, oh my God, I'm so glad that person shared it because I was going through the same thing and now I feel like I have someone to... This is not that. No, this is whatever the opposite of that is. It's like, girl, you should like not mental have. health stuff. Sure, share share away. Find your community of people. This there's no community of people that you know. Well, I mean, I'm sure there is, unfortunately, but just this is a no. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's what I'll leave you guys with. That's all we have for you today. You're welcome for that. If you made it to the end, as always, we appreciate you. And yeah, have a good week. We will see you on Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.